Hey everyone, Madrybred here. Pokemon Gold with only one Larvitar was pretty slow and rough. Let's follow that up with another brutal one. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Fire Red with a team of only one Hopip. So Hopip is gonna be really rough. It's grass and flying type, so we're weak against a lot. And considering that our stats look this bad, I think that we're gonna get one shot a lot. We're the wonderful combo of too weak to deal serious damage and too frail to take a hit. By level up, we learn the status powders and leech seeds, so that's pretty cool. Outside of that, though, I'm not really seeing anything that great. Oh, and we don't have any attacking move at all until level 10, so I guess it's a struggle grind at the start. Yeah, that's not gonna be good. By TM, we honestly can't learn much. Pretty much just the moves that everyone can learn, plus a few grass moves and aerial ace. I think I might only want return and giga drain. I need to save room for some status afflictions. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I think that I can win, but that this is going to be one of those runs where I'm level 100 spamming cheap moves like Sleep Powder, just hoping for a lucky battle by the end. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Hop It. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Oh, and there's a sponsorship later in this video. Uh, don't worry, you'll like it. Trust me. Let's do this. So, right off the bat, I used the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Bulbasaur with Hopip so that we can do the whole run with it. I picked to replace Bulbasaur so that our rival would have Charizard, probably the hardest for us to fight. I named him Hopiplup because that's hilarious. I got the idea from this Twitter thread with J-Rose. I probably don't need to explain who that is, but I'll put a card to his newest run here anyway. Looks like our nature is docile, so neutral stat gains, and the only ability Hopip can have in this game is Chlorophyll, so I doubt that's really gonna come into play much. I could do a Solar Beam and Sunny Day combo later, but I'm not really sure it's worth it. So right away we go straight to the forest and you know exactly what we're doing. We have to find a Metapod or a Kakuna, use 30 Tail Whips, then we have to run away so they don't use Struggle on us, find another Metapod or Kakuna, and then use 30 Splashes. Then we have to run away again, find another one, use the last 10 Splashes and our Synthesis, and now we can actually fight back. We can fight other things now as well, but it would be super dangerous since Poison Sting is actually super effective against us. Naturally, I spent all the early money I could get on potions so that we take the least possible amount of trips back to the Poke Center. Healing there would restore our power points, forcing us to sit around wasting them again against more Metapods and Kakuna. It doesn't help that their encounter rate is pretty low, so most of the time what we find are Weedles, the only thing I absolutely cannot afford to fight. I mean, it took me 20 minutes just to run out of power points for the first time. I really don't want to have to do it again. The only nice thing I can say about this grind is that at least it's not a Magikarp. They level even slower and need to hit level 15 to learn Tackle. We only need to get level 10. <laughs> not that I haven't done this with a Magikarp in the past, but you know, I'm saying this is better than that time at least. Once we finally hit level 10 though, the grind still isn't over. There's no way we're going to tackle down Geodude and Onyx, and we don't have any grass moves coming up. At level 13, we get Poison Powder, and I actually don't know if Brock has his 10 full heals in Fire Red, so I guess we're gonna find out. So, while we grind, some fun facts about this run. I was actually originally gonna do a Pokemon Platinum run this week, but some technical issues with the emulator sidelined that run. For some reason, I can't get the turbo buttons working with that game specifically, but it works fine with every other Pokemon game. <laughs> like, even Pokemon Black, which is on the same DS emulator. You guys recently told me to use auto fire buttons for the sake of my health since in all of my old runs, I just mashed the buttons. Thanks to mashing buttons for the last two years, by the way, the A button on my old controller is just awful now. But anyway, since I couldn't get the auto fire buttons working in platinum, I figured I should just push that run back till I get it working. But then my next challenge on the list was hop up in gold, and that would have been two gold runs in a row, so here we are doing it in fire red for variety. I will still do that hop up in gold run, by the way. Anyway, here's our first try at the gym at level 13. It actually went surprisingly well against Geodude because it turns out he couldn't get rid of our poison. Our tackles were almost definitely doing one damage, but he also wasted a lot of time on defense curl, so we only had to use synthesis to stay healthy once. 
It was a different story dealing with Onyx, though. It started pretty much the same way, but then we got taken out by Rock Tomb. Right, we're weak to rock. Time to grind. So, I'm not totally sure how to handle this problem. You see, we're just about to learn Stun Spore and Sleep Powder. They're both good, but we can't poison and sleep them, and we just won't do enough damage without poison. We could grind all the way to level 20 for Leech Seed and stack that with poison, but that's a pretty long grind. Let's just get a few levels and try again. Maybe all we need is some more health and better luck. At level 16, I tried again. Geodude still goes well, but this time we actually have an easy time with Onyx. He never landed a Rock Tomb, and most of his moves were hardly hurting us. We even leveled up and got Sleep Powder from the fight. Awesome. Naturally, after the gym, I kept fighting every trainer we passed. Look, this is a hop hip run. We both know that I need the experience, because as soon as we run into a fully evolved Pokemon, progress is gonna grind to a halt. Plus, I'm worried we're gonna get stuck at our rival the moment we get to Celadon City. S Celadon? Cerulean? I always mix those two up, it's totally Cerulean, isn't it? On our way there, though, I took the Helix Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. On the other side, I go straight after our rival. It took quite a few tries before I could take Pidgeotto down with my accuracy being completely ruined, but on this run, I only took one sand attack. Problem is, right after is Charmander, and we just didn't stand a chance. I decided to try again at level 26. It took a few tries, but on this one, we managed to get Sleep Powder and Leech Seed right away. Tackle still wasn't doing much, but we only took two gusts, so between that and Leech Seed, we still had half health. Same strategy for Charmander, and thankfully he stayed asleep for ages, so we never got hit. Abra can't fight back, so we just healed up and finished him off, and last was Ratata, who could hardly hurt us. I didn't even bother with Sleep Powder on him. After that is Nugget Bridge, and I'm just happy that we finally get to grind on something that isn't Spearow's for a little while. I figure that once we finish this route, we'll probably be at least level 30. That'll get us Mega Drain, and I'm hoping that that's enough for us to win the Misty fight. Honestly, I don't really want to get rid of any of my moves, but I guess if one has to go, it's going to be Synthesis. Mega Drain and Leech Seed will be keeping us healthy anyway. Once we get to the Water Gym, we totally destroyed the whole thing with Mega Drain. Finally an easy fight. So, while I grind on the SSN, let's plan. We aren't getting any more level up moves, and we really don't care about many of the TM moves until we can get Return. And we really don't care about any of the TM moves until we get Return, so we just need to level up to keep pace on stats. It's not too bad to grind here since there's water Pokemon that go down pretty quickly to Mega Drain, but neither that nor Tackle are strong moves in the first place. The only major battle between us and Return is the rifle fight on the SSN itself, thankfully. Rock Tunnel shouldn't be an issue since we have Mega Drain. At the rifle fight, Pidgeotto went pretty well, but Charmeleon was quite the brick wall. Not actually from his Ember, that didn't do much damage until he burnt me. It was the smoke screens that really ruined us. We can't take him down very quickly, and he can ruin our accuracy, so I think we just have to try this until we get a run with great sleep luck. On the first try where Pidgeotto didn't hurt us, we actually had a decent time against Charmeleon. I decided to skip Leech Seed, and I think it paid off, although we were pretty hurt by the time he went down. Raticate helped us get some of our health back through taking it down with Mega Drain, and last was Kadabra, who also tried to ruin our accuracy, but he still went down in two tackles. Now if you'll excuse me, I have hikers to destroy. There we go, we finally have Return. I don't know if we've maxed out our friendship yet, but I'm pretty sure that we have. Let's learn it right away and fight our rival while we're in town. We start with Sleep Powder and Return on Pidgeotto. Return did great damage, but it wasn't quite enough for a two-shot, so we ended up taking tons of damage before he went down. We did the same combo with Charmeleon, but his Ember brought us down to only six health. This is gonna be close. On Execute, I wanted to heal with Leech Seed, but it doesn't work on grass types, so we just ended up going down to Confusion in the end. After that, I went straight to the Rocket Hideout. If we can't win the previous fight, there's no way we're ready for the Grass Gym. The Pokemon Tower Rival fight is normally a super easy one, so it's got me a bit worried that even with Return, we need three hits to faint some pretty average Pokemon. I cleared out all the trainers on the way to Giovanni. His Onyx and Rhydon were both one-shots, but Kangaskhan was a real problem. It took quite a few tries because of being crit by Mega Punch all the time. We can hardly do any damage, to the point that our Leech Seed actually heals us more than our Mega Drains do. We won, but this took a few tries. Oh right, I forgot to do the Electric Gym. This one was kind of funny. The first two Pokémon went down fine, but we got paralyzed in the process. 
thanks to that and Raichu's double team, we ended up giving him tons of free shots in on us. But even with those disadvantages, we just hardly won on the first try. Well, that's out of the way. I tried my hand at the grass gym, but it wasn't even close. Every attempt, we just got hit with stun spore and acid, even on the runs where victory bell goes down. Man, we have such a level lead, and it's still looking bad. Maybe I try the rival fight again? Pidgeotto was a two-shot with returns, so we took a hit by Gust. For Charmeleon, we still put him to sleep to avoid Ember, but it also only took two hits. Execute only hit one confusion, but it did manage to confuse us. Thankfully, we didn't hit ourselves, so it was okay. As Kadabra came out, we snapped out a confusion early and one-shot him. Nice! Last was Water Onyx, so our attack is down. I put him to sleep, then started testing moves before deciding to stick with Mega Drain. We took a few hits, but in the end, we got the knockout. Alright, now here's the part of the game where we really need to fight all the trainers. We have the Grass Gym and the Poison Gym available to us, but both of them are super effective against us and we're weak against them. They both use poison moves after all. Plus, the Poison Gym has Pokemon with smoke screen, so that's gonna be an issue. There's also Silph Co, but the rival fight there is notoriously difficult. So I do what I do best. I hunt down every last trainer I can. I cleared out Pokemon Tower, then I started clearing out the routes to the southeast of the map. I had to skip out on some of Cycling Road this time because there are so many poison types that are just too tanky for us. It takes a long time to do all of this, but it's pretty clear that we're gonna have to do it sooner or later. This is one of those runs where we do so little damage that we have to stay many levels ahead of the competition if we want to stand a chance. Well, I do this unbelievably long grind, it's time for the sponsorship! Hey, I see you going to the bar to skim and see when this is over. I'll have you know I was explicitly told that I would get to say whatever I wanted in this ad. I'm not joking. I haven't signed anything that dictates what I can and can't say. Literally the whole reason why I almost never do sponsorships is because I refuse to read someone else's script and shill you stuff. So today the episode is sponsored by Chimera. The dude who runs it is actually a fan of the show, and I can tell because he was actually able to talk about the show. And let me tell you, most sponsors do not put in that much effort. Chimera sells nice shirts, like graphic tees, short and long sleeve shirts, polos, as well as sweatshirts and hoodies. Naturally, I refuse to sell you anything that I haven't tested first, so they sent me a bunch of stuff, and man, this actually looks really good. You guys know about my mom, right? She used to have to print shirts a lot back in the day because of the band that she was in, and she assures me that this is really good print, and honestly, it looks like it to me. If you win over my mom on your product, you get some points in my book. Of the many, many t-shirts that I own, these are easily the most vibrant looking. I'm no camera master, so I don't know if my pictures are really doing it justice, but I really love how these look. I did the usual graphic tease washing technique of turning them inside out and cold washing them too. Still looks great. They also feel a lot more comfortable than most of my shirts, so that's an obvious plus. It's all ring spun cotton. Also, maybe it's because I'm Canadian and everything is really expensive here, but these shirts cost less than shirts of equal quality that I could buy locally. The value is really awesome, especially if you want to buy the non-graphic tees. Super comfortable and doesn't even cost that much. Thanks again to Chimera for the sponsorship. I think they asked me for 30 seconds, but I'm looking at what I wrote and it looks like it's more than 30 seconds, so enjoy the extra long ad. That's what the people want, right? An extra long ad? If you're interested in Chimera, I'll have a link in the description. It's not an affiliate link or anything, it's just a regular link to their website. Oh, but you can use the code MADRYBREAD at checkout for a discount, so that's cool. I think that's how they track the number of people who actually bought stuff from this ad, you know? <laughs> to know if it worked, basically? Thanks for your patience with the ad, it really helps support me, especially in the super low paying month of January. Woo, do the same work and get paid half as much. <laughs> Let's get back to the video. First, I go after the grass gym. Thanks to a missed stun spore and our sleep powder working out, we made pretty short work of her only dangerous Pokemon and then took her down. When we beat her, she gives us Giga Drain, so I went ahead and learned it. It's not that strong, but it's an upgrade from Mega Drain, even if the power points are pretty low. Next is the Poison Gym, but this wasn't even close. We can't two-shot coughing, so this is basically a no-go. Even if we didn't get hit by a single smoke screen, we take so much damage from Sludge that we'd lose anyway. So I guess we'll do Silph Co first. 
I'll give the rival an early try just to say that we did, but I really don't feel confident. It starts great with Pidgeot staying asleep long enough to get the knockout, but three hits a return to win has me worried. I tried using Sleep Powder and Leech Seed on Charizard, then started landing returns. The damage was alright, and if we had another turn to hit him, he'd go down, but then he woke up and one-shot us with Flamethrower. Okay. Well. A few levels it is then. Okay, we're back again, this time after clearing out the entire building. Pidgeot ended up never waking up, so we went to the Charizard fight with full health. We put him to sleep and started hitting return. It still wasn't doing much damage, but we crit and took him down. We might actually stand a chance. Execute is next, and I was petrified of Stun Spore, so I put him to sleep right away. We hardly did half his health and damage. If we were a level lower, he might have woken up. Alakazam was a two-shot, and he only used Future Sight, and last was Water Onyx. We lost some attack to Intimidate, so I seeded him and started using Giga Drains to stay healthy. We weren't dealing much damage, but neither was he, so after a few rounds, we chipped him down. I can't believe we won that fight. Last was Giovanni, and he put up a little bit more of a fight than usual. I did have to try this multiple times because we would sometimes get poisoned by Poison Point, but really the only thing worth talking about here on this run was Kangaskhan. I went for the usual Sleep Powder and Leech Seed strategy. She did wake up pretty early and hit a few big Mega Punches, but we did manage to win in the end. On our way out of town, I went after the Psychic Gym. Kadabra was a one-shot with Return, and second was Venomoth, who only hit a weak Gust. Mr. Mime looks like a total pushover after the first hit did so much damage, but then she used Barrier and Hyper Potion to stay in the fight. We dropped her to red health again, taking a Psy Beam in the process, just for her to heal again. By the time we took her down, we were a bit hurt. Last was Alakazam and all he used was Calm Mind though, so we took him down. Back to the Poison Gym and it took tons of attempts to make any progress. But even if we get to Muck in good condition, we don't do well. He'll sleep for ages, and it won't matter because minimize an acid armor. He's just too tanky. Multiple hyper potions being used to keep him healthy really doesn't help our case either. So this is a weird situation. We're grinding to beat the Poison Gym even after we've cleared Sylph Co. That doesn't happen very often. It has me worried that even if we beat the Poison Gym, we're going to have to deal with the Fire Gym right after. Blaine can be kinda dumb, as we all know, but he does have fire types as well as two Pokemon with Intimidate, so Return is gonna be pretty weak. We can't even use Surf until after the Poison Gym too, so we can't even find a better place to grind yet. Considering the fact that we are hardly doing any more damage than we were since before Sylph Co., I think we could be grinding for a while. Alright, Poison Gym time again. The first coughing only hits a sludge on us, and as I started setting up Leech Seed and Sleep Powder on Muck, we ended up critting our first return for the knockout. Okay, he still has potions, so I'm not off the hook yet. The next coughing got put to sleep on the first round, making Koga use an item to get rid of it, giving us a free knockout with two returns. Last was Weezing, so we put him to sleep and seeded him. Return did decent damage, and he woke up to nail us with sludge. Our second return didn't faint him, and we took a smoke screen, but Leech Seed damage actually finished him off, finally giving us this win. That just means that we have to go do the fire gym now. I don't feel confident, but at least there's a few trainers in the gym that we can level up on. Oh man, we didn't even make it past his first form Pokemon thanks to them all-knowing Fire Blast. Plus, Growlithe is the first Pokemon he sends out, so the attack is down the entirety of the fight. So, I guess we're grinding in the Pokemon Mansion now. Some of the Raticates here give really good experience, at least in comparison to most wild Pokemon that we can reach. There's almost no trainers left on the whole map unless I want to go surfing around and finding all of those. Now, I don't think that those levels are going to be a simple solution to the gym, considering that we didn't even get to his most dangerous Pokemon. But if we're hardly able to deal half of Ponyta's health and damage on a hit, then there's no way we can two-shot RK9 or Rapidash. I'm going to need Sleep Powder no matter what, but the more turns they have to stay asleep for, the worse our chances get. Hitting Sleep Powder on four Pokemon in a row and having each one stay asleep long enough to faint is just not happening. We need to be strong enough to not get one-shot by everything, to deal enough damage to two-shot at least Rapidash, and then we still need to be very lucky on top of that. Okay, so on this attempt at level 70, things start great with us not only getting hit by Growlithe, but he even wasted a Hyper Potion. Ponyta looked like it was going well, but we ended up losing half of our health to a Fire Blast. Against Rapidash, I put it to sleep and used Leech Seed, but Blaine woke him back up with a full heal. 
We were thankfully able to put him back to sleep, so stalling just resulted in us healing more health off Leech Seed. He did use a Hyper Potion in his sleep, but he stayed asleep for long enough that we knocked him out. Last is RK9, so our attack is cut by two stages at this point. Right away, we put him to sleep, used Leech Seed, and started spamming Return. It hardly did anything, and he woke up fast. I thought we were doomed as he hit Fire Blast, but we hung on with only two health left. Our next Sleep Powder hit, letting us hit a couple returns for the win. I can't believe we survived that. With that done, we only have one gym left, the Ground Gym. The first two Pokemon were easy, but then it was out to Nidoqueen. Knowing that she could paralyze us with Body Slam, I put her to sleep and hit Leech Seed. Now, anytime we make contact with Return, we could get poisoned, so there's some luck involved, but it didn't take long before we got the knockout. Nidoqueen was next, and I did the same setup with him, although he woke up early and did some damage with Thrash. He still went down pretty easily, but we did get poisoned. Last was Doug Trio, who is a one-shot with Giga Drain. Last before the Elite Four is one more rival fight. For Pidgeotto, it's the usual Sleep Powder, Leech Seed, and Return strategy. We managed to take him down without a scratch. Rhyhorn was a one-shot like usual, but next is Charizard. Right away we missed Sleep Powder and lost Speed to Scary Face, making us slower. Once again, I thought we were doomed as we took a flamethrower just to land with a sliver of health. We did manage to use Sleep Powder and Leech Seed, but I thought we were doomed. Believe it or not, he stayed asleep and we took him down. For Execute, I put him to sleep, knowing he'd probably just put me to sleep if I didn't, and then two returns did the job. Alakazam came out and outsped us, disabling return as we tried to use it. Then he built up Calm Mind as I hit Sleep Powder and Leech Seed for more health. Knowing I needed Return's damage, I just tried to stall him out and stay healthy with Giga Drain until I could use the move again. As soon as we could, he disabled our Giga Drain instead. Last was Water Onyx, so our attack is down and we still can't Giga Drain, so I used Sleep Powder and Leech Seed. We got hit with Leer, but believe it or not, it didn't totally end the run. Yeah, I don't know why he keeps using Leer this long either, but it was pretty funny. We actually ended up fully healing as we took him down. So, uh... I guess the Elite Four is next, but I'm looking at my stats and I don't exactly feel awesome about them. Maybe I can brute force some with Lorelei with Giga Drain, but Agatha is gonna resist our only attacking move that can hit ghosts. We're gonna run out of power points before we can take her down. I could learn Aerial Ace, but it's not gonna be tons better and it's probably gonna use up a move slot that we really need for the rest of the Elite Four. I guess I just need to get some power points up and grind? I mean, our attack and special attack are both 75. Usually we have at least 100 by now. Let's at least try Lorelei and the Bruno fight. If they go down easy, then maybe we can grind by fighting them instead of wild Pokemon. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Ice Trainer Lorelei. Uh, so Giga Drain did less than half her health and damage, then we got one shot by Ice Beam. Guys, I think I have to grind a bit more. <laughs> So this one's a bit of a grind. Uh, it turns out that doing both very little damage and being very frail is a pretty rough combo. Who knew? I already got all the power point ups I can get for this early in the run. So if I really do end up needing more power points for moves that hit ghosts, then we're gonna have to learn either Bullet Seed, Aerial Ace, or Solar Beam, none of which are looking very appealing right now. Solar Beam would be the strongest, but it wouldn't be worth it without Sunny Day. So I guess Aerial Ace would be the next best one, but I don't think I can delete any of my other moves. I'll need them for Lance and our rival. Giga Drain is probably going to be terrible against her Poison Ghosts, but it's only three of them, and we do have Leech Seeds, so I think we can get by without Aerial Ace. That said, I couldn't take Dugong down to half health and we're super effective against it. How bad is that going to be when we Giga Drain down a Gengar? That's the kind of thing that makes me think that we're going to have to be level 100 to win this run. That's a pretty long ways off though, so let's just see how things go. Back to Lorelei again at level 80. This time we put Dugong to sleep and we were able to two-shot her with Giga Drain, but honestly the damage output was not amazing. Slowbro was second and went the same way. Maybe we do stand a chance. Against Lapras, we missed Sleep Powder and got one shot by Ice Beam. Man, if we're still getting one shot by Ice Moves, then all it takes is a one turn gap in sleep for us to go down. We have to keep getting stronger. This time at level 85, it literally goes the exact same way. Like down to missing Sleep Powder, leading to us getting one shot by Ice Beam. Full disclosure, by the way, at this point in the grind, I am using Fast Forward liberally, and it still takes a very long time per level. It's pretty brutal grinding like this, knowing that it's not going to help us that much. 
I'm getting the feeling that even at level 100, we're gonna have massive issues dealing enough damage to take down any of the tankier Pokemon. Maybe if we keep leveling though, then we'll have enough health and special defense to survive an Ice Beam. Level 90! We get to Lapras, put it to sleep, and did less than half her health and damage. I used Return to do a bit more, hoping that it wouldn't drop her to red so that she doesn't heal back up. It worked, but she woke up, confused us, we hit ourselves, then went down to Ice Beam. Still not ready. Okay, so I got up to level 94 and went ahead and bought a Miracle Seed at the Rocket Game Corner to boost our Giga Drain a bit. It's only a 10% power boost in this game, so I really doubt it's gonna make that much of a difference, but maybe? Alright, more tries at 94. We still couldn't get a two-shot on Lapras thanks to her berry, but at least she stayed asleep for long enough to faint. Jinx had me worried because of Ice Punch, but we're faster than her, so we were able to put her to sleep, hit return, she used a full restore, then we two-shot her to take her down. Last was Cloyster, and it took a little while to win since I kept using Sleep Powder. I was mostly worried about her spamming Protect and making my Giga Drain fail, but as soon as she went to sleep, we finally got the win. Second is Fighting Trainer Bruno. First was Onyx, who was a one-shot with Giga Drain, and second was Hitmonlee. Knowing he could slow us down with Rock Tomb, I put him to sleep and took him out fast. Machamp was crazy tanky, so right away we put him to sleep and seeded him, but he did manage to lower our speed with Scary Face. Thanks to that, after he went down, the Hitmonlee was actually faster than us. We took some Mega Kicks before he went down. Last was another Onyx, but one Giga Drain finished him off. Third is Ghost Trainer Agatha. It starts with Gengar, so we put her to sleep and used Leech Seed. I did go for Mega Drain, and man, it did almost nothing. We ended up getting a crit reasonably early for a knockout, but that felt incredibly lucky. As soon as Arbok came out, we lost attack to Intimidate, did very little damage with her turn, then got messed up and poisoned from Sludge Bomb. I knew that I should have gone for Sleep Powder. This is brutal, but at least I have a few rare candies, so we can just top up at level 100 and try some more. Alright, so we need to talk about just how many times I had to try this fight. Gengar can shut us down right at the start of the fight with three of her four moves, plus she often lands in red health and gets healed with a full restore. She can use double team to ruin our chance to hit, confuse Ray to get us to hit ourselves, and obviously Toxic is an instant death since there's no way we could finish the rest of the battle with it. Shadow Punch doesn't hurt us very much, but she rarely uses it. The amount of luck required to win this fight is unbelievable, but I need to show you this wild attempt. It started with her first Gengar going to sleep. I thought right away it would be a doomed run since we missed our first Leech Seed, but things went okay for a while. We got her down to a sliver, so naturally she used a full restore, and I thought we'd lose because she used a double team, but then she switched for some reason. I mean, it means that it got rid of her Leech Seed, but as her other Gengar came out, we got a free hit. Then suddenly she switched again to Golbat, so I hit that with the Sleep Powder that was meant for the other Gengar. I have no idea why she did that, but two returns took it down. Then it was out to Arbok, so our attack is cut. We put her to sleep right away, then hit a pretty weak return. I kept going for it though, and in three hits, we took her down. She's got three ghosts left, so she sent her strongest Gengar back in. Right away, we put her to sleep and slapped on the Leech Seed. We only had three Giga Drains left, but I started going for it. I tried using Return sometimes to avoid dropping Gengar into red health because I was afraid of more full restores. In the end, we lucked out. She missed Hypnosis, and we just straight up took her down. Next is the original weaker Gengar. I hit Sleep Powder and Leech Seed, then started using Return till I thought Giga Drain would finish it off. It worked great, with us only taking a Shadow Punch, and Giga Drain and Leech Seed managed to finish her off. Last is her final Ghost, Haunter, and we're out of power points on Giga Drain. You have no idea how tense this was. Just watch this footage. It's insanity! We have to keep putting her to sleep while Leech Seed slowly takes her down. In the meantime, we have to spam return to kill time and to run out of power points in case we have to use struggle. Not only that, but Haunter spends long periods of time putting us to sleep and spamming Dream Eater to stay healthy. And of course, she has more healing items. Normally in a one-on-one -on -one individual Pokemon fight with text speed set to fast and animations turned off, it takes about one minute before someone faints. This took five, and it may have been the longest five minutes of my life. This Haunter had the best hypnosis luck I have ever seen between hitting it so often and us staying asleep for so long. It was unbelievable. 
By the time she finally got taken out by Leech Seed, we were almost out of power points. I tried this fight a million times, so I can't even describe how tense this final sequence was, knowing that I might have to do it all over again. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Lance, and Water Onyx is out first, so our attack is down the entire fight. We took Dragon Rage, but either than that, he was easy. Aerodactyl's next, and this is another one that we have to Giga Drain thanks to Return being both weakened and not very effective. I did use it once to try and keep him from dropping into red before the feint though, and it worked. Dragonite was next, and he had me worried. We used Sleep and Leech Seed, obviously, but Return was hardly doing anything. He stayed asleep for ages but woke up right before he fainted and hit a hyper beam to take out half of our health. Next was Dragonair, and although we put him to sleep, they have the Shed Skin ability, so he actually cured it early. Seeing that, I went straight for Return just for him to safeguard and heal up. Safeguard means that we can't put him to sleep, so we had to take a Dragon Rage. He healed again, but our next hit crit for a one-shot. For the last Dragonite, we got paralyzed right away and hit with Outrage, but I managed to get a Leech Seed in. The next Outrage almost took us down, but our Giga Drain did decent enough damage to heal back up. He got fatigued and confused, causing him to hit himself, but we lost a turn to Paralysis. It worked out though, as he just used Safeguard, handing me the win. I can't believe after all those tries on Agatha, we got a first try on Lance. Finally, the Pokemon Champion. It started with Pidgeot, and it literally took me 11 tries just to not get taken out. Sleep, Seed, and Return is still the strategy that got the knockout. It just took a lot of tries for Sleep to actually stick. Right on was a one-shot with Giga Drain and third is Charizard. We put him to sleep and seeded him, but he woke up fast and hit a fire blast to bring us to a sliver. We put him back to sleep and just kept spamming return until he went down, but we only got less than half of our health back. Alakazam is next, so I put him to sleep and just went right for return, knowing that he's got bad defense. We crit though, so it was a one-shot. For Executor, we put him to sleep and used return and sleep powder like usual, just for him to full restore. Okay. Well, we put him back to sleep and fainted him. He never hit us. Last is Water Onyx, so there's our attack drop. Normally he isn't a huge problem, but this time he lasted a long time. We hit Sleep Powder and Leech Seed early, then used Giga Drain to heal up. He woke up and used a Dragon Rage, but he couldn't really keep our health down. Problem is, we couldn't keep his health down either because he kept spamming healing items. We brought his health down to red just for him to use a full restore twice, before he finally ran out of healing items, giving us a hard-earned victory. That was insanity! So many rough grinds, so many wild fights, and so many battles that I had to brute force. It was a brutal run, but it's cool to have some really interesting battles again. I really hope that you guys like that run. Next Pokemon challenge is going to be in a couple weeks again. Doing two of these runs a month instead of three has really been helping me make them longer and more interesting. It just gives me more time to really work on them, you know? I was thinking I'm still going to do that hop up in gold run soon, so maybe that'll be the next one. I'm sure it's going to be horrible. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. If you want to see me do more challenges like this, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I can always use more ideas from you guys on what I should do next. And check out the playlist in the description if you want to watch all the Pokemon challenges that I've already uploaded. Now we get to the ending part of the video where I get to go off script and just talk about stuff. Uh, I'm sure that future MDB will be in the premiere right now to see the reaction to it, but I hope that the sponsorship thing went over okay, because honestly, financially, that helps a lot. Uh, it's it's pretty big actually and the fact that the sponsor gave me the freedom of being able to Basically write whatever I wanted for the script. I mean he was literally telling me he didn't even need script approval He basically just trusted me on it because he already watches the show, you know So uh, god, I appreciate that because I've never had that offer from a sponsor before that was pretty sweet it's all my genuine opinions that I gave you on the shirts and everything. You know that I wouldn't sell you anything if I haven't tried it before, and uh, boy howdy, I've turned down a lot of money before for products that I didn't want to sell you guys, even though I really needed the money. I know if I did, like, Raid Shadow Legends or one of those, like, I know all of you would probably be fine with it, because, uh, whatever, it's supporting the YouTuber you like, but personally, I just don't feel comfortable doing it, so I always turn it down. <laughs> yes, I do get Raid Shadow Legends requests all the time in my inbox. And yes, they do offer quite good money. 
Uh, however, I won't. Everybody knows what those contracts look like. Everybody knows it's all template. You got to do the script and uh, it just seems so miserable. I'd rather not. Anyway, this has been a super long voiceover and I got to rush to edit it because my work is getting all bunched up this week. So I got so much to do and it's like <laughs> one in the afternoon and I haven't eaten yet because I've been so busy working on this voiceover. Hope oh, the microphone didn't hear my stomach grumbling at any point. <laughs> it was loud enough that I definitely heard it. All right, I I'm going to go take care of myself and get this whole thing edited. Hope you had a fun time. Thank you everybody so much for watching and until next time, have a nice day.